Hello, and welcome to the Smart Chiropractor Show. I'm Dr. Jeff Langman, here with my co-host, Dr. Jason Deitch. Thank you so much for tuning in. We are here each and every Tuesday talking about mindset, marketing, business principles, clinical conversations, and much more. We have a fantastic show lined up today. And if you don't want to miss anything in the future, be sure to enable those notifications if you are checking this out on social or if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the Smart Chiropractor YouTube channel. Jason, I am pumped. I, I'm a separate, uh, different uh, background here. I'm on a little bit of a vacation right now, but we are staying consistent, which is one of our tenants that we, uh, we teach and invite and encourage our docs to stay consistent as well. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, enjoying the summertime as you are as well. Uh, it's a beautiful day here on the West Coast. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying where you are as well. Summer's here, lots to learn. A lot of people are reading. We're going to talk about some great summer reading we recommend in just a few moments, but I am glad you are all here. Enjoying the Smart Chiropractor Show. Let's have another great one. Let's have a great one. We're going to kick off this week as we do each and every week with our Mindset Mentor segment. Here we go. Welcome to the Mindset Mentor segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Jason, this uh, segment has a very simple title, yet there is so much depth here. We're going to spend a lot of time, and that is, what is your money mindset? I saw this in our show notes. I'm going to kick it over to you to lead in on why this segment and this topic is so critically, and critical is the key word here, critically important for everybody listening and watching out there. Well, let, let's tackle this. You know, there's a lot of talk about philosophy. Philosophy is a way of thinking. It's another form of thinking about the word mindset. And, you know, most chiropractors I know are not independently wealthy. They are not trust fund kids. Uh, they have not won the lottery. Uh, at some level, there is a need to figure out how do I provide my services in exchange for finances for money. It's obvious, I think, for most. But it is also one of the most complicated issues that most chiropractors, I'll say most people, I'm not picking on chiropractors, most people have not really figured out how to get their mindset straight with their money, with their money philosophy. There's a lot of people that have a lot of confusion about money, in some cases, even negative feelings, maybe not about money itself, but about people who have money, about wealthy people. Maybe they've learned some things that, you know, money is the root of all evil or other types of mindsets about money that I'll just say could be counterproductive to attracting it. <laughs> and one of the issues is that, you know, money is our currency. It is the energy. It's the thing we use to exchange value. The first place that I think a lot of chiropractors sort of have to come and reconcile with is when we're in the healthcare business, I'll dare say even the life saving business, which I think is what many of us do. How do you put a price on that? How do you figure out what that's worth? How much is somebody's life saving their life, giving them their life back, taking them from living in chronic pain to living pain free or somewhere within that scale of improving their life so they can live with less pain, more performance, greater clarity, and all the wonderful benefits of chiropractic care. How do you reconcile that you can provide that type of service to somebody and then figure out how much is that worth? How do I charge them? How much should I earn for that? But here's the real deeper issue. Most chiropractors have a remarkable service to provide people, and yet simultaneously many, I'll dare say most chiropractors, live with some level of financial stress. Some chronic monthly financial tension. I think of it as the word cuffs, chronic financial stress. Month after month after month, many chiropractors suffer from it. They may have gotten numb or immune to suffering from it, that they just call it normal, but here's the question. Do you know the answer to the question, how much money must you earn to not feel financially stressed out? How much money has to come in each and every month 
so that you can feel free, that you can actually afford to make the choices you want to make. You can run the type of practice you want to run. You can work with the type of people you want to work with, the type of payers you want to work with, or work not work with the type of people and not work with the type of payers you don't want to work with. That is what we think of as freedom. Freedom to make the decisions, freedom to make the choices, freedom to work more or less, freedom to work where you want, when you want, with who you want, as much as you want, or as little as you want. That is, to me, the definition of what freedom is in this context. And the only way to really get there is to have your money handled. In fact, let me ask this question. If you're practicing and you think of what you do in your practice, the policies you have, the charges, what you charge, how much it costs to see you, the procedures you have in place. If you think of the way you're practicing now, the messaging, maybe the marketing, maybe the advertising, when you think about your current circumstance, if you think about what you're doing now, and I ask you the question, how would you do it if you didn't need the money? I ask you the question, how far off is what you're doing now from the answer to the question of how you would do it if you didn't need the money? So think about it for a minute. If I didn't need the money, what would my practice look like? Does it look exactly the way it, it does right now? Or is there some sense of, well, wait a minute. If I didn't need the money, the way I would really practice is this way. I would much prefer to work with this type of person or these type of people. I'd much rather use this type of technique or this type of technology. I'd much rather do it this often or not do it as much. I'd much rather blank if I didn't need the money. If there is a gap between what you're doing now and what you would do if you didn't need the money, then this is the conversation for us to have in order to really sort of get it straight. I'll dare say get it in alignment. And the first way to sort of solve for this is to ask the question, how much money must you earn to not feel financially stressed out month after month after month? Jeff, we talk about this. This is the essence of our new book coming out, The Payday Practice. You'll all see it very soon if you're following with following what we're teaching and inviting consistently, our next conversation we're bringing to the profession is this conversation. How much money must you earn to not feel financially stressed? What would your practice look like if you didn't need the money? And what can you do to generate monthly recurring revenue that covers your monthly recurring expenses so you're actually in the position to practice the way you want with who you want as much or as little as you want because you don't need the money. Jeff, we've been collaborating on this. I, I, I checked the other day. I believe it is four years now from when we started the idea to now coming out with our book, coming out with all the support, training, programs, and actual tools you need in order to be able to generate monthly recurring revenue so that you can meet your monthly recurring expenses with monthly recurring revenue. That is the goal, that is what the payday is all about. Jeff, we've been talking about this for a while. I'm curious for your thoughts and comments on mindset of money and the difference between, we've experienced it uh, in our business, we've done it both ways, we've had transactional businesses and we've got recurring revenue businesses what is what's your message to everybody just about the mindset difference between transactions and I'll call it relationships when people are on some sort of ongoing circumstance membership subscription they're saying let's do this over time that's called a relationship that's not thank you I feel better call you when it hurts again maybe I'll call somebody else maybe I'll call you I don't know what do you think is the difference that most people need to know in order to really start owning this concept of getting their money straight? I think the number one thing, Jason, is that you can do it. So if you're listening and watching, it is available to you. And then the second piece is 
It's available to you regardless of how you practice as a chiropractor, whether you practice in a adjustment first, adjustment only practice, whether you're in a multidisciplinary practice, whether you are in a sports performance practice, quite frankly, it doesn't matter. And here's why, is because your solution for a membership, a subscription, or a continuity program in your practice, here's the beautiful part, it can be a reflection of what are the needs of your ideal patients. And if everybody's practice is a little bit different, all of us get fired up by doing different things. Pediatric practices versus sports, as we said, you know, subluxation and vitalistic practices versus more pain relief practices. However you practice as a chiropractor, I have yet to see a practice. And I was speaking with Brett Winchester of uh, Just All Education this week. I said, I have yet to see a practice. Maybe there's one out there, <laughs> but I have yet to see a type of practice that can't have a membership or subscription continuity program embedded into what they do. And I believe that that's really the biggest initial shift is understanding first that it's possible and it's already happening in some cases. The second step is then really starting to identify how can you implement this in your practice. That's where we're going with the payday practice is to really lay out the plan. But those are my big hitters, Jason. So many docs I feel like get caught up with, oh, well, that they can do that. They do that, whether that's another chiropractor as they, Amazon and Netflix as they, Athletic Greens and Ritual as they, they can do that, but I, I, I don't know. I, you know I'm a, a smaller practice in a town or in a community. That's exactly the reason why you actually should have it because people love to support local businesses and you can provide your patients, your people, your community with exactly what they want. And the second piece of that is, of course, well, what would I do? That's just a strategic thing. So that's the easy part. That's really just identifying who are you looking to attract? What are their needs? What are their goals and desires? What are the benefits you can provide? That's what helps to start sort it. We're going to get super detailed with payday practice. But those are my big ideas. How about yourself? I, I think that's great. And I, I think you're right on. And I do think, and that's why this is a mindset segment. It's not a business segment because it all starts in your mind. It starts with your belief, your acknowledgement that it is possible for you to do. The next question, if you think it's possible for you to do, would be ask, asking the question, well, why should I? <laughs> why would I change? Why would I do something? Why would I rock the boat? I'm getting by now just fine. Well, the answer is that there is a significant shift. You felt it, I felt it. There is a significant palpable shift in our attitudes, in our beliefs, in our mindset when you have the confidence to know that instead of the first of every month, let's be clear here, if you're in a transactional business, that means that on the first day of every month, your business goes back to zero in collections. That's the way, that's the way we count it. It's a monthly thing, right? So on the same day that most people have to pay their rent, their mortgage, their lease payments, their insurance payments, all their monthly recurring expenses. That's what we're talking about. On the same day, usually most of those hit is the same day our business goes back to zero in collections. And that's the insanity that keeps us on what's basically a treadmill, right? You're running, you're doing a lot of work, you're doing a lot of effort, and you're not getting forward. You're not moving forward anywhere because you're always playing financial catch up. The reason to make the shift, the reason to invest in what you now know you can do, the reason to shift and adjust your mindset to want to generate monthly recurring revenue is to reduce and eliminate your financial stress. If you knew that the first day of every month you could cover all of your monthly recurring expenses on that day, how would your feeling, how would your practice, how would your life how would your attitude, how would your self-esteem be different? That's the next part. Yes, I could do it. Why would I want to? Because living without monthly financial stress is freedom. That is joy. That is when you don't have that tension, that cloud, that frustration, and you actually emote and, and express a greater level of light, of joy, of attraction, because typically most people can smell when you're desperate. And that's really, I think, one of the bigger arguments. There's not, I don't think, any chiropractor that's ever been in the situation that some smarty pants has not said, yeah, you know what the problem with you guys is? 
you always have to keep us coming back for more care, more care, more care. And that's because in some cases, when people present long-term care plans, they come across as being more needy for the patient to need to take the care than generous and articulate in why the person needs the care. And that desperation comes across and it affects all of us. And so when you don't need the money, when you know your bills are going to be paid, when you have automatic monthly recurring revenue that meets your automatic monthly recurring expenses, and you can come from that freedom, then you can just share the truth and people can make the choices of whether they want to participate or not. And you don't have to be negatively affected. That is an entirely different way to practice than most chiropractors are practice. And that's the invitation that we have. Jeff, I know I don't want to go too long on this, but your thoughts on the difference between knowing your expenses are going to be covered and hoping your expenses are going to be covered. What do you say? Uh, hoping's not going to cut it. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> knowing, yeah, that's it. No, knowing your business expenses are covered each and every month is a fundamental shift. It enables you. It's not a shift in what you do. It enables what you do to be a heck of a lot more fun. It enables what you do to be that much more uh, congruent, in alignment, however you define it with exactly who you are and how you want to practice because you have that financial stress relieved. I think it is the number one thing docs need to be thinking about, considering, starting to piece together. We've been teasing it pretty much most of the first half of this year. I know we are super pumped to get the payday practice out there, which really is that playbook, that workbook, however you want to say it showcasing exactly the specifics of what we're discussing. We're not going to stop discussing it. We're going to keep talking about it on this show because as the book gets released, there's a lot of details we want to go into so that everybody listening and watching can really create their own payday practice. But yes, you don't want to be uh, hoping that the that the expenses are covered because if that's the case, chances are you're going to come up short many, many times. What you want to do is have the systems and processes to get there. It's probably not as hard as you think. It doesn't mean it's easy. It's taken us a lot of time to put it together. But in the way we have, it's going to make it super easy for you really to accelerate this. You don't have to have technical knowledge. You don't need to feel like you're selling stuff. You don't need to change your practice whatsoever. We believe that you can have a payday practice as a true and direct extension of what you're currently already doing. And the most important component of that is you can actually attract and retain more of your ideal patients by having the systems and processes that keep them engaged in your practice. Jason, you said it. I'm going to, I'm going to hold us to it. We don't want to go too long in money mindset on today. This has been a fantastic segment. Please, if you are geeking out on the money mindset, and if you are geeking out on the mindset mentor segment each and every week, head over to YouTube. We have a playlist with every single mindset mentor segment listed out. But on today's show, we are going to head over to our clinical conversation segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Welcome to Clinical Conversations on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. We have been highlighting a variety of our fantastic speakers from Axis 2021. That was our online clinical event, and we anticipate holding Axis 2022, this year's event, sometime in the fall. So keep your eyes peeled for our speaker list as well as the opt-in information. Last year, it was totally free. We had a paid option if you wanted to upgrade, but we had it live for free, and I believe we're going to do the same thing this year. We were fortunate to have a variety variety of awesome guests inside and outside of chiropractic. And today we're going to feature one of our guests outside of chiropractic. We had Dr. John Schultz, a medical doctor in Colorado who practices in the regenerative orthopedic space. He came on and I'm going to play a clip here of us discussing why collaborative care is so important. So without further ado, let's head over. I'm going to be clicking a few things on my screen here, but we're going to take a listen in and a look at Axis 2021 with Dr. John Schultz describing the importance of collaborative care. Collaborative care and, and why it's so important. I know we have a couple you know, items that we have up here in terms of outcome and being everybody kind of sitting within their own specialty and, and focus and really the collaborative care model of not letting the patient just try to figure out an incredibly complex system. But I guess if I just ask you that highest level question, why is collaborative care so important? At, at, I'm going to say at large. And why is it so important to you with your experience in your practice day in and day out? 
Well, here, here's a little a moment of, of vulnerability, mm -hmm. if you will. Most MDs do not understand what chiropractors do. And as we all know, sometimes with lack of knowledge or ignorance, shall we say, there's prejudice. And regrettably in our community, physicians and DOs at large, we're not trained about what incredible work chiropractors are capable of doing. We have no knowledge. And regrettably, there has been this big chasm between the two. Now, fortunately, I do not participate in that. I have lots of friends that are chiropractors that have taught me so much that I know their intrinsic value. I absolutely believe and actually uh, uh, subscribe to their values of less drugs, less medication management, no addicting products, and no steroid injections, because we know, and the science is really quite clear, that the steroid actually compromises the integrity of the tissue. So I've been fortunate that I've gotten personal training and fellowship, because the fellowship part is really important. There's nothing like having someone underneath their wing and go, listen. And I've had that blessing here in Denver and Boulder. I like this whole, we're specialists in our own area of expertise. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I know there's conversation about some chiropractors that sort of dabble in regenerative medicine kind of thing. Um, let, let's sort of lay out the concept of collaborative care where, you know, we all have our specialties. We all have our lanes. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I'll be the first to say, I don't know any chiropractors that appreciate uh, when physical therapists or other types of doctors or health professionals, you know, start dabbling in what they'll call manipulation, what we'll call adjustments. Uh, they're like, wait a minute, that's our domain. Uh, and I'll say, you know, to me, it's awkward that those in our field uh, go out of our domain to go into your domain. Um, what's your perspective on that? How should it be? How do you describe uh, sort of our lane as chiropractors your lane as a regenerative medicine expert uh, and sort of how they should work together on, I'll call it sort of the conservative care continuum. I know chiropractors, I mean, people, for example, who try chiropractic care before they come to see you in some cases, if they've waited too long, they may need that next level of care. Yep. In other cases, I know you get patients who come to see you, it's not bad enough for your care. And instead of going, sorry, we can't help you, you go, you need a chiropractor and you'll in fact help them find one near them where they're local. Uh, I know you have an international practice, meaning people literally fly in from around the world to come to your practice. So I know you're always looking for where can I send this person, whether they're not bad enough to need your procedure or whether they've waited long enough or the damage is enough, they have your procedure, but then need follow-up care afterwards Paint sort of your vision, your ideology, your perspective of, you know, what do those lanes look like and, you know, for Dasha sure. and what's the patient journey from your perspective? So let me tell, I think, and that was a multi-pronged question. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to attempt Jason to uh, break that down. Let's just talk about lanes and then let's talk about collaboration and then let's talk about the patient experience. So for 16 years, we've been doing this. And how is our practice different than the majority of practices out there? Number one, this is all we do, okay? We don't do Botox on Tuesdays, fillers on Wednesdays, and lipo aspirate on Thursday. We do high level PRP stem cell to all the joints in the body every day. And we work at night and the weekends about it. That's all we do, first and foremost. We don't prescribe narcotics. We don't do ablative procedures like a radio frequency. Number two, our system is different in that we have a university grade lab. Why is that important to you as a provider and a patient and a family member? It's because we can customize the PRP and the, the stem cells for you. In other practices, they use kind of a daiquiri mixer, sort of a, a blender, 
And the problem with that is one size fits all, which we know doesn't work. Number two, what we have what's called imaging and every single injection we do, even at one in the toe and the, you know, in the thumb is always under guidance because we believe that you can have only the best results when you have precise injections. Number three, we have an approach like many chiropractors where we look at the entire body as a unit. We call it the SANS approach. It's symmetry, articulation, neurologic, and um, stable stability. It's only when you take off the blinders of the orthopedist, you know, hey, you know, I'm only looking at your knee. Don't talk to me about your ankle. If you got a back problem, hey, it's two doors down on the left. So that's our lane. We do evaluations. We do high level of injections of precise uh, injections with custom platelets or PRP. How does this work in terms of collaboration? We have, as you mentioned, thankfully, patients from all over the nation and actually the world. And so what I look for in collaboration is simple help. We desperately need other providers, other chiropractors to assist us in the management. Some patients will come to us before, I mean, they'll come to us and they haven't had appropriate chiropractic care. And guess what? They don't go to Marvin's Gardens and they certainly don't go to Boardwalk. They got to go back because we believe in the importance of chiropractic care. We believe that all these are stepwise and critical. You don't get to go to stem cell first, second, or third. And then we also, after the injections, we need help. We can't be everything to everybody. And so we are looking for people that are interested and committed and committed to getting the patients better. And we have a large number of patients. We're just looking for people. For example, recently in the state above us, Wyoming, we had a patient that had uh, some treatment here. We can't provide care. We didn't know anyone. So we went on to the Smart Chiropractic Care Network and behold, we now got a provider to provide that type of care home run, right? And that's what we're looking for. What does this look like from a patient model? You know, COVID has taught us many things. One of the things is, is that we can do a telemedicine evaluation. And during that, from the, you know, from a beach or a cabin, we spend, and this is what we do for the majority of our patients outside of the Denver area, is we spend 40 you know, we spend a significant amount of time during which we recount their history and all their treatment, including chiropractic care, the results therein. We review the MRIs in person. We're not dependent upon a radiographic report. We actually look at each MRI and then we tell them the treatment plan that we would recommend. And are you ready? We tell them their candidacy. We are transparent. We're not looking for the next buck. In fact, we don't believe that one and one and next, you know, repeat, you know, repeat and rinse, repeat and rinse, repeat and rinse is a, a viable or appropriate model. We believe in continuity. We believe in building a base of, uh, of patients and their families so we can continue to get them better. So we're looking for long term successful providers throughout all of the nation and the world to help us secure this goal. That's awesome. Th thank you so much, Dr. Schultz. I think that that really sets the stage for really where we're going next, which is, you know, the current state of affairs, you know, what's going on in the regenerative and orthobiologic space. There's so much to dive into here. One thing I want to bring up from what you just said that also is a stark contrast is I think we've all either experienced ourselves or certainly, you know, been tagging along for that 30 second doctor visit. Right. And it's like, sometimes that can be so demoralizing, especially as healthcare providers, we're like, man, how you're yeah. guessing, right. You know, it's like, and, and really being able in your practice to take that amount of time 
time necessary to really understand what the patient's going through, to understand what challenges they might have and what their goals are in the future is so critically important to being able to craft that care plan, which meets or exceeds their their expectations. So I, I just want to give a special, I guess, a, a shout out in recognition to, to you and in your practice for having constructed it in a way that I think all of us as healthcare providers is the type of practice we'd want to go to ourselves. And I think that that's, that's so, so important. So thank you. Uh, and, uh, and I'll well, no, and thank you. to that extent, two other things. This is not a churn and burn. We spend, as I mentioned, quite a bit of time and it's us. This is not a mid-level. This is not an LPN. This is us. A great interview with Dr. John Schultz out in Colorado. And the, my big takeaway from that is just the understanding that as movement-based healthcare professionals at the highest level, which is what we all are as chiropractors, many other MDs, DOs are interventional by nature. Who's taking care of the patient the rest of the time, aka the rest of their life, really being able to help guide and direct them in the best manner possible with how they're moving, how they're thinking, what they're eating. So, so important. We can be that key link, regardless of what type of medical provider they're seeing. Uh, the good news is, is that it's interventional, that the, that the, but meaning that they don't need to see the medical provider necessarily every single week, every single month for the rest of their lives in most cases. But it's on us. We have to take that territory in a good way by helping people understand that we are those providers that they should be seeing time and time again, whatever that means for you, your patients, your findings, their health goals, whatever you're putting together in that care plan. It's important for you to accurately discuss that with your patient because bottom line is nobody gets younger. We all get older. Injuries happen and gravity is undefeated. Those are my big takeaways. Jason, how about yourself? You know, I think a lot of the people in the profession sort of have the opposite perspective of collaborative care. Uh, at first, it seemed like the main motivation to collaborate was because chiropractors benefit by collaborating with medical doctors, whether it's for credibility factors, whether it's for re referrals. Uh, it was a professional benefit to collaborate. Uh, what I like about John's take here, Dr. John's take here, is that it really is about the patient or the person's benefit. You know, if you've ever been a patient yourself, if you've ever been someone who needs care, it's the fastest way to recognize and learn how broken the system is. And so to have, from a healthcare perspective, to have an attitude of wanting to be of best service to the people who need our care, the answer is we're at our best when we're able and willing to collaborate with the other professionals, our patients, our clients, the people who come to us. If we can work with their other providers, then that's better for the patient. That's better for the person. That's better for the. So it is, I think, not so much for our benefit because we get more credibility because, ooh, the medical doctors accept us or think that we're okay or validate us. But it really is another level of being of service to the people who come to us. They're the ones that need professionals to work together and simplify a plan for their benefit. We're at our best when we do that. I could not agree more. Very, very well said. Let's head over to our Research That Matters segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. It's research that matters time on the Smart Chiropractor Show. Welcome. This monthly campaign for all of our Smart Chiropractor members is all around sciatica. It is June and we are talking sciatica. We think in an annual calendar, monthly campaigns, weekly topics, daily posts. Our monthly campaign is sciatica. Our weekly topic is what you need to know about sciatica. That is the public facing conversation that our smart chiropractor members are having across the most powerful channels and platforms all week long. That includes their screens in office, their emails that are going out and their weekly email newsletter, all of their social posts, Google My Business listings, and much more on top of those video scripts and blog posts, which we'll take a look at in just a moment with one of our members. But I want to talk for a moment or two first about why this topic is so important and why we put it in to the smart chiropractor. A couple of different reasons. One is there is so much misinformation in and around the topic of sciatica. That is one aspect we believe that you should be the healthcare professional teaching and inviting consistently and helping people understand more about their body, more about their health, and more about how you can help. Second 
piece of this is it's a highly searched topic. There are people every single day in your community looking for answers to this issue. It's a big issue. 90 plus percent of individuals are going to have some sort of spine related issue at some point in their life. It is the number one way people are first exposed to chiropractic care. It doesn't mean we're limited to only taking care of that, but it is one of the main ways people learn about a chiropractor. So being able to deliver this message in a true and a scientific and a congruent fashion, it's, nice, it's a nice way for a new patient acquisition. It's a great opportunity to build further trust and knowledge with those individuals who are already patients in your practice or in your online following. And the third component ties to the research. This is what we highlight in the blogs and in the video scripts that we deliver to all of our Smart Chiropractor members, but I wanna cherry pick a few things and talk B2B, doctor to doctor, with everybody listening and watching about this topic. One is many people in your community, we get blinded as chiropractors, and we hang most chiropractors hang out at times with other chiropractors. It's like everybody knows X, Y, and Z about the body. No, they don't. You are probably in the top 1%, if not the top half of 1% in terms of understanding of the neuromusculoskeletal system. And in many cases, chiropractors know more than internal medicine doctors, primary care physicians. The only physicians I have personally encountered that I felt like might have a slight edge are some of the neurosurgeons that I personally engaged with, but by and large, and that's because they're so structural. Um, however, by and large, when we're talking about conservative options, when we're talking about movement-based care, there's nobody better. There's no question about that. Now, here's the kicker. Many people in your community believe, and this is shocking, but it is true, believe that surgery and injections fix the problem of sciatica, which is not only woefully wrong, but it is potentially dangerous. But the only way they're going to know anything different is if you show up and showcase what it is that we know. And there's some great studies out there. We've highlighted it throughout this month, but one is specifically relative to a microdiscectomy versus spinal manipulation, as they deemed it, for sciatica. And it was shown that five years, 10 years out, whether you had surgery or whether you received an adjustment, you received just about the same amount of benefit. Now, there's two things with that that I wanna highlight. One is that showcases surgical intervention is not an absolute fix. Two, if we're talking about do no harm, the risk reward here is wildly you know, you know, different between begin getting adjusted and having surgical intervention, 20% complication rate. The third component of that were those were adjustments done in isolation. Imagine how better the result is when you continue the care, when you continue to coach, guide, and direct those individuals over time. I have a sneaking suspicion that we will over-index and outperform surgical intervention long-term, which is no surprise to us as chiropractors. Movement is the fix. Movement is how you correct the issue. You don't change it by degrading the biomechanics of a joint, except in extreme red flag situations. However, the public has no clue. That's why sciatica is our monthly campaign. That's why what you need to know about our sciatica is our weekly topic. Jason, big topic, lot to discuss. We've been laying it out all month long. We'll continue to do so with all of our smart chiropractor members. But any thoughts out there for those listening and watching that might not be members yet? Yeah, I think you you really nailed it. You know, obviously the clinical aspect of it should be obvious to most chiropractors. We know the research, we know the science. We can't believe that supposedly doctors who are so, phil uh, excuse me, scientifically based don't follow the science. It's just mind boggling that that's the case. But here's the important part that I really wanna make sure that people hear. We think it's obvious because we forget and we think people think like we do and they don't. Let me make the example extremely obvious. Most people that refer to chiropractors often only refer other people with the same condition they had that they got better with because they don't know how to think that you can in fact help other things in the spine different than the thing they came to you for specifically. So if somebody came to you for back pain and they had a friend who had headaches, they don't often connect that you can help the headaches because all they knew was that you helped them with their back pain. And that's the limited knowledge most people have that we have to remember. It is, I'll say, incumbent upon us 
to not react to the environment and go, wow, I can't believe people don't know. I can't believe people don't understand. I can't believe there's so much misinformation out there. There is. <laughs> believe it. There is. That's just the reality of what is. So therefore, you have two choices to choose from. Either keep complaining about the way it is because it should be different, which is all true, or do something about it. Take responsibility for the people in your practice, for the people in your community, for your health tribe. Your health tribe is something you're going to hear us talk more and more about as we release the payday practice, which is the what we call the group of people you have the ability to influence. That means your email list, your social channels that you communicate on, your streaming video when people come in to see you. You have the ability to create content, to come up with ideas, or to hire us to help you come up with those ideas, to do the research, make them beautifully designed, to lay them out so they're visually attractive and simple and to the point, but based on research. And when you do that and you put that message out on a consistent basis, those people that thought you were only good for this thing now acknowledge and can understand there's so much more that's available to them and to the people in your community because they don't know. And that's just the reality we all have to face. They don't know. If they knew, they would do things differently. They don't. So if you want them to do things differently, then the reality, you know, we signed up for this job. We signed up for the fact that people do not just understand what we do and why we do it the way we do. Many chiropractors don't even agree. So we have to be doctors. And what I mean by doctors, doctor means teacher. We've got to be teachers is what it's all about. This is an important topic you mentioned about. Millions of people are looking and searching for somebody to help them understand what sciatic is, number one, and help them relieve it, number two. So be out there. Use our tools if you're smart. Do it on your own if you are really smart or you've got something, a superpower beyond what we have. But this is the easiest, best, and smartest way for you to get your message out to your community on a regular basis. The one point I'll put here is for people to make sure they read the Payday Practice book coming out soon. The reason I want to mention that is there's a section in the book that actually enlightens chiropractors on how to think about communicating with your health tribe. A lot of chiropractors think, I'll do it. I've got it from here. I like to do it. I'll do my own videos. And then there's other chiropractors that go, I don't like to do it. That's what I'm paying you guys to do it for me. And the best of both worlds is the best of both worlds. And that means following what mainstream media companies do. And the way they build their audience is to teach high quality stuff that's nationally syndicated nationwide while also teaching local news, sports, and weathers. And the way to think about that in your practice is to think that we'll do the high quality, beautiful research-based stuff while you share the testimonials and the experiences and your unique approach to these things. It is that one-two punch, so to speak, that is really how you're gonna get best results. And I've got a feeling we're probably gonna look at somebody who's getting those results in our next segment, so stick around. You are 100% correct. We're going to head over to our member highlight segment, and we're going to showcase exactly one of our doctors utilizing our materials on his website to increase traffic, better patient experience, great opportunity to teach and invite consistently. Welcome to Member Highlights on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Member Highlights is when we take a few moments and highlight a member of the Smart Chiropractor doing the right thing by leading their community with our teach and invite consistently strategy. And I am going to bring this up here and share my screen with Dr. Anthony Rodriguez. And he is in South Florida, I Care Chiropractic. And highlighting his website right now, you can see there are some blogs there dealing with 
sciatica, our monthly campaign, as we just discussed during our Research That Matters segment. I had a fortunate opportunity to hang out and meet Dr. Anthony this weekend, teaching at Parker Seminars in Orlando. He was exceptionally complimentary of everything we do for him and his practice with the Smart Chiropractor. So if you're checking this out, Anthony, thank you so much for coming up, saying hi, coming into the room, and also giving us the feedback. I love it. And here is the truth is you are getting the results because you are taking the actions. As we can see here on his website, he is showcasing each and every week one of our Smart Chiropractor blogs that does a couple different things, some of which we have previously discussed on past episodes. Number one, it feeds the Google monster. Google loves to see when people are posting to their website. Why? Because it gives them more opportunity to showcase you when people are searching in your community. What do I mean by that? Think about it this way. If you had a website, I'm going to be extreme. If you had a website that had two words on it, that does not give too many context clues for Google to understand when to show you, who to show you to. That is leaving a lot of question marks and they in the user experience world do not like question marks. They like answers. That is why Google is an answer machine. So let's go to the other side of the equation. Let's say you have tens of thousands of words all around health, healthcare, chiropractic, everything to do with neuromusculoskeletal care. You are feeding Google massive amounts of data and information of who you are and what you're about, which in turn makes it easier for them to show you to people when searching in the community. And this does not necessarily even mean the transactional search of chiropractor near me. When people are searching for answers about their health, are you showing up or are you invisible? It's a very simple question. And the more content that you put out, the more consistently you put it out on your website, the more you will show up. It's a direct linear relationship. There's no magic there whatsoever. And the other beautiful thing is even if somebody's not searching and getting the answer, if somebody visits your website and they're clicking around, does it look like it was built 27 years ago and has no information whatsoever? That's not inspiring. Nobody's going to go to that chiropractor or very few people. Your conversions are going to stink. However, if your website showcases that it's constantly updated, there's constantly new information, that's a great context clue to your guest, your visitor on the website, saying, well, if they're keeping up this much with what they're doing online, I'm gonna go under the wild assumption that they're probably gonna be delivering fantastic up-to-date care in their practice because they're not negligent with their online presence. So, so important. Awesome job, Anthony, uh, staying consistent with posting the blogs up here. No doubt it's making an impact. I was super glad to hear it. Uh, Jason, I'm going to get off screen share, click over to you. What are some of your thoughts? You know, I, I love when chiropractors can be consistent and congruent with what they actually teach their patients. And what I mean by that specifically is that there's a lot of chiropractors that get really excited because they hire some firm that runs some ads and generate a lot of activity in their practice in the short term really quick. Now, most even, even the advertisers often will tell you that this doesn't work this way consistently. You'll get a, a spurt in the beginning, you'll get some activity, but over time you'll end up paying more and getting less results over time. You know, that sounds a lot to me like how drugs work, that they help you get a immediate gratification, a quick relief in the short term, but over time, they wear out. Now, the reason I bring this up is because there's a lot of chiropractors that speak one way to their patients about how there's no process that does not require time, how healing is a process, how healing takes time, how it didn't, it took us a while to get into this type of circumstance. It's going to take us a while in order to be able to heal our way out of this circumstance and to be patient with the process. <laughs> But when it comes time to their own activity of attracting people in their practice, you've got the same two choices. Are you looking for that immediate gratification at the expense of your long-term benefit or like drugs? I mean, listen, drugs work if your goal is to get immediate relief, immediate gratification. If you're not thinking about the long-term consequences, drugs are great. <laughs> The problem is you know better and you do think about the long-term consequences and you do recognize that in the long run, that quick relief comes at an expense. 
All of that is exactly the same way you would think about marketing or in some cases advertising only. I'm not against advertising, just like I'm not against drugs. It's the dependence of drugs only and not doing anything else with the expectation that you're gonna be fixed. It's the dependence on paid discount advertising to think that's what's gonna build your practice in the long run. You wanna get the immediate gratification, go for it. My point is that doctors like Anthony Rodriguez and the other smart chiropractors are out there understand that what it takes is consistent action over time. And the number one reason why your practice isn't full there's only one simple reason, and that's because not enough people in your community understand who you are, what you do, and the benefits they would be experiencing if they came in to see you. If enough people understood that, you'd have a waiting list practice, you'd be as busy as you wanna be, which means the one and only focus really is how do we get more people to understand who you are, what you do, and how they would benefit from coming in to see you, Rinse and repeat over and over and over again. In fact, practice what we preach. Let's put in the time, let's put in the reps, let's be patient, let's do the right thing. Why? Because that's the way you get long-term results that are sustainable and last. We all know there's a difference between numbing the pain and healing the problem. Just like there's a difference between advertising your way to a lot of activity and teaching and inviting consistently, building an audience of people that know, that understand you, they know, like, and trust you, and learn from you, and now understand, like you understand, that healing is a process that takes time, keeping your nerve system clear through adjustments is the way to maximize your healing potential. Great job, Anthony. And uh, Jeff, it's great that we just keep on highlighting different clients who are, as you consistently say, taking action and therefore getting results. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. And if you'd like to be featured, if you're checking this out and you are a Smart Chiropractor member, you'd love to be featured on an upcoming episode, please hit me up, Jeff, at thesmartchiropractor.com. We're happy to check out your platforms and see what's up and highlight you in a future episode. Also, if you are watching right now and you don't want to miss a thing, and I hope you don't, if you're watching on social, enable those notifications so you don't miss a show. And if you are watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. And if you'd love to learn more about The Smart Chiropractor, how we help our docs generate more of their ideal new patients, improve their retention, get that flywheel of reactivation without spending any money on advertising, head over to thesmartchiropractor.com. Again, that is thesmartchiropractor.com. You can check it all out. You can hop on a demo if you'd like, see how it's gonna work for you and your practice. Bottom line is when you show up each and every day teaching people in your community, your practice is gonna benefit long-term, no question about it. Now let's head over to our featured guest segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Welcome to the featured guest segment on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Today, we are going to feature a conversation that Jason and I recently had with Dr. Eric Kowalki of SCED, Why Every Chiro Needs Online Scheduling. This is a fantastic tool that is complementary to what we do with the Smart Chiropractor. We love it when our docs have a great online scheduling system. Why? Well, the answer is because we send emails, we put out personalized social posts, and so much more that help drive those that all-important traffic to those online schedulers. So whether it goes through your EHR, whether it goes through a fantastic company like Sked, or whatever your choice is, ensuring that you have an online schedule I think is critically important. And you're going to be able to tune in to a conversation we have with the man who developed a technology specifically around this. Hey, Smart Chiropractors, welcome to the Smart Chiropractor Show. In our featured guest segment, this has been one that we had circled on our calendars for a while, Dr. Eric Kowalki of SCED, practicing chiropractor, family man, businessman, entrepreneur. I am excited to ask you a variety of questions about your endeavors. Thanks for taking some time and chatting with us today. Absolutely. I'm excited to be here. One thing I want to kick right in on SCED because this is you know something maybe docs have seen it at some of the trade shows, maybe they've seen it online and are unfamiliar with exactly what it is. I'd love to kick it off just with that. Then we can get into some of the backstory. But what is SCED for any of those docs out there that are unfamiliar? Yeah, that's a great question. We um <clears throat> we run a big clinic in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we developed SCED to uh just start to help us because we couldn't find enough good team members, which 
I'm sure we're the only ones with that problem in the whole world. Um, and we needed software that could just help us scale our business and uh, automate a lot of things. I think if, you, if you're if you an entrepreneur and you think about growing um, and becoming a CEO, you know, you delegate, automate, or eliminate. And uh, we, dele- we could only delegate to people that were on our team, which we didn't have a lot of them. So there was nobody else that could take on any more. And there was stuff we just couldn't eliminate. You know, if we eliminated reminding people of their appointments and we eliminated the ability for them to reschedule, our volume would go down and our business would go down. So the only one left was automation and there was no software that could automate uh, all the things that we wanted it to do. And so that's what we created. Skid is really a software platform that integrates with EHRs and patient apps and creates a, an extraordinary experience for the patient, but at the same time allowing you to automate a lot of the things that you're manually doing now. Um, but what's so unique is we, we did it so that it doesn't feel like robotic automation. Like you would think of automate, you think of like a robotic assembly line or something. We did it so that from the patient perspective, they don't even know that it's automated. It comes through so authentic and original that the experience is if there's a team member manually doing all of the communication, even know that it's automated. And so that's really what we created Skid for. And it's just grown and grown and grown and grown over the last five years to do so many different things to help chiropractors just scale and grow um, and keep that authentic experience between them and their patients. That is a super high value, uh, Eric, and, and thank you for putting that together. I'm, I'm looking at your website while we're talking as well, and you do a, the app does a lot of different things. Uh, and I guess if I were a potential client of yours, how would you prioritize, you know, what are the most popular things or what, what's the main intention? Oftentimes we sort of build it to do this and then we get a bunch of requests and you do that also and the other thing and you sort of creep into other things but what's the main functionality and the main intention of sked yeah i think it's scheduling that, that that's our core that's what we started with you know that's the problem that we identified was we we did we didn't have control of our schedule and we were having team and you know there's always human error so we would either be slightly overbooked or underbooked, so we'd have a whole bunch of people to adjust and then there'd be nobody for 15 minutes. And then a whole bunch of people would come in, then there'd be nobody. Or a bunch of people would come in at the same time as a new patient and a reevaluation and a financial consultation and an extra review, and you're like, ah! And then nobody for a half hour. You know, the team's like, well, they just no-showed, or they called last minute and said they couldn't come in. It was just an inefficiency in our scheduling. And as chiropractors, we focus and we put so much time and energy and money into getting more new patients. You know, if you ask the average chiropractor, what are you going to do this year different than last year? We're going to go get more new patients. But then we process them, we onboard them, and our scheduling just falls flat. And we leave it up to the one person at our front desk or two people to manage all of that. And so we really built Sked on like, okay, what are the rules that you would train a CA? You know, you hire a new person tomorrow. What would you tell them for scheduling? schedule these codes at these times, it takes this long, don't schedule them here, don't do this. Uh, these regular adjustment codes for people that are on wellness, they could reschedule themselves. Let's, let's, you know, there's an app that they can use. We put all the criteria in there and they can reschedule themselves, only let them do it this many times, only let them do it within this time frame of the actual appointment. Um, and so we just created Sked as an automated virtual assistant saying, hey, here's all the criteria that you have to, all the rules you have to abide by, and then the patient can literally pull up their app, click the service provider if you want to. I mean, we're running two locations, six providers, uh, 17 different types of appointment codes, and Sked manages all of that perfectly for us. It never makes mistakes. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Somebody Sunday night at 9 p.m. knows their schedule for the week with their kids' sports and everything, and they can jump on the app and find the times that work for their family to come in. Um, and so it's just automated that scheduling process. That's the core, that's the foundation. And then from there, it allows us to do so many other things because now we know when their appointment was, when they're arriving to their appointment, if they arrive to their appointment, how much time after their appointment. And that just automates our communication through scheduling or through um, text message and emails and push notifications and that sort of thing. Yeah. You're speaking our language. We always talk about how many chiropractors have holes in their bucket. Uh, They have people coming in the top and people falling out all over the place. And any tool, all tools, I think, that can sort of patch and fill those holes are critically important. I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction. As you were saying this, it's clear that you are a passionate chiropractor. It's clear that you're also 
knowledgeable as an entrepreneur in the software as a service space. I'd love to trace that back a little bit and understand like, how'd you get into it? Were you always you know, really entrepreneurial? What, getting into software is a big endeavor. Was there, was that a mindset? Was it some, somebody that inspired you? How did your career take that path to begin something like beginning a software as a service type uh, business within the chiropractic space? And I, I imagine expanding beyond. It's a great question. I'm a mechanical engineer. <laughs> so I went to mechanical engineering school up at Michigan Tech. That was my initial profession. So I graduated. I was a diesel piston engineer for Cummins Diesel Engine Corporation for two years. Um, and I think as an engineer, you just solve problems. You know, you make things better. And, uh, everything can always be better. And there's a better system and a solution for it. And um, engineers just think and try to figure out ways to solve it. And so that's what we did, you know, we opened our office, my wife and myself and two kids built out the whole office in 2011, March 2011. We opened August 1st, 2011, and we grew really fast. We were at a thousand patient visits a week in three years with myself and three team members. And uh, we were only in 1,300 square feet, so it was a limitation of resources. We just, even if we could hire more people, which we couldn't at the time, there was no room for them to go because it was such a small office with three adjusting rooms. And this is where the idea came from because our phone was ringing off the hook uh, and I'd have all these voicemails at the end of the day and they weren't all new patients. It was people calling to say, hey, you know, I can't remember if I was at three or three thirty or I couldn't come at three thirty. Can I come at three fifteen or um, I can't come today, but my husband's going to bring Johnny. But Billy, that was also on the schedule, can't come. And it was all these like just scheduling things. And my team was on the phone and I really needed them to be engaging with practice members in front of them because the wait was for 45 minutes all day every day I'm like I need you to be entertaining everybody that's in the waiting room right now and educating them on chiropractic not on the phone you know confirming that their appointment is 15 minutes from now or 15 minutes earlier and um yeah we just thought man that we, I didn't want to create this I mean I was just like there's got to be a solution out there for us already problem was none of the solutions synced to real time with our EHR system and so that we were the first company that created a software system that could sync with Platinum Genesis Touch real time, uh, pushing and pulling data. So we knew if the office changed an appointment or a practice member changed an, changed an appointment in the app, within seconds that information was syncing back and forth. So we just would never screw up the schedule. Um, and, and the solution just didn't exist. So um, I just found some developers and we started creating it. And if it was only for my office at the time, that was all my intention was like, if this only works for me, it's going to be worth it. And, you know, then people just started to find out about it and they're like, I didn't even know that exists. Can we use it? And then we're like, okay, well maybe we should turn this into something that more people can use. That is a great story. And uh, we agree. Uh, we also are addicted to always making things better. Uh, and it's a good thing. So uh, th thanks for doing that. What, what are some of the most common, uh, I guess, feedback or thank yous that you get from chiropractors who, you know, may go, you know, listen, I don't need to sign up for another something. You know, it's it's not a problem that I think I need to fix. Why would I need to you know, spend more money? But uh, oftentimes there's a difference between spending and investing and investing means you're saving something later. Uh, what, what are some of the most I guess the most common feedback you get from chiros who implement it? Uh, one, is it easy to implement? And two. What, what do they tell you once they do? You know, what's the sort of aha, wait a minute, I wasn't expecting this, but thank you. Yeah, yeah that's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, in our office, one, one thing that we just constantly strive as a chiropractor is to provide an extraordinary experience. You know, we want every person that walks through our door to just be wowed by every moment of it. And so we just naturally carry that over into this corporation of Skedis. I know chiropractors are busy. I'm busy. If you if you onboard me with a new software and you tell me I got to do six one hour phone calls, I don't care what it's going to do for me. I don't have time to do that. <laughs> so we created our company to white glove onboard this whole experience, customize it for your office, learn about how do you run your clinic, how many providers, how many services, what hours, like what are all the nuances, and then we have an entire <clears throat> customized onboarding team that does all of this stuff on the back end, and then once you set it up, it just runs on its own. Um, and so that's, you know, that's what saved us time. And we just created that same thing. But I think uh, mo the biggest feedback we get is just freeze up people's time. You know, there's something you just can't get any more time. 
for yourself or for your team. And there's always more things that we want our team to do. There's more things we wish we could do. Um, and there's just only so much time in the day. And most of those are eaten up by all these little tasks. And if you can start to automate some of that stuff and offload that stuff where it doesn't create more work, but it actually frees up your team's time and it frees up your time and it does a better job than what you could do on your own. That's just a no brainer to any entrepreneur that wants to grow and scale their business, especially in today's day and age where, you know, team members call in sick. They, you know, they just quit. They don't show up. They, you know, uh, are just overwhelmed. So they're in inevitably going to miss something. If you can get a software that just never calls in six, it always works. Every message always goes out. You can see that it's confirmed delivery. Every patient is reading the message within 30 to 60 seconds of receiving the text message. I mean, how else can you communicate to people? And now in today's day and age where you know they're going to get the message within 60 seconds of reading it, 98% of everybody reads the text message. So I can literally right now, if there was like, hey, there's a snowstorm and my office is changing hours tomorrow, within two minutes, I could have a message out to thousands of people and I know 98% of them are going to get it. I mean, there's just no other way in today's day and age to effectively communicate information um, like that. And so that's what SCED allows you to do. It's just another team member that communicates to your practice base and allows you to inform them with education and marketing and appointment reminders and all of that information that's so important for us to grow our practice. Consistent communication is critical to practice success. There is no question about that. If you were to look at sort of, you mentioned, you know, really growing and scaling a practice quickly when you, when you began and then moving into, you know, the software space as you're sort of scratching your own itch, what do you believe are perhaps two characteristics uh, within yourself that help guide that direction? What are two characteristics that have enabled you to be uh, perhaps more successful than many docs listening and, and watching today? Uh, how would you identify that? And if you looked inside, uh, wh wh what would we find? Well, I have six children. <laughs> <laughs> so my time is very uh, limited and valuable. Um, and I think... Um, you know, I've worked with so many chiropractors, and I think the biggest thing that I see is thinking, well, when I get to this point, I'll hire that next person. When I get to this point, I'll onboard that next software that's going to help me be more efficient. And it's they never get to the point where they can afford or have the time to continue to you know, create durability and scalability in their clinic. And I've always thought it the other way. If there's a software or a person that I can hire to help us grow – I'll do it before I get there because that's what's going to allow us to get there. And I've never, I've always been hiring and always changing things every week to make things better. That just has allowed us to continue to grow and scale. And I think what's so funny is when you get outside of the chiropractic business space and you look at other companies, how many companies are one person away from like everything not working and shutting down? Mm -hmm. Chiropractors, the average chiropractor is one team member calling in sick and everything's chaos. You know, like, what, can you imagine any other company running where, you know, one, one person doesn't show up to Starbucks and they like can't serve coffee that day. Like it, it's funny to think of, but for, for most chiropractors, that's why that's they're all so stressed out. They're like, oh man, I didn't show up. And now I'm running everything on my own. I mean, just the margins in chiropractic businesses are, are, are good enough. We can afford to hire good people if you're running good systems and get the right software to run your business and um, just create durability so you're not one thing away from everything falling apart. Um, and that just allows you to scale and have time with your family and be able to go on vacation and everything still runs and still works. And um, yeah, you just keep growing. You don't go backwards. You keep your momentum going so your practice is always growing and you're just continuing to impact more people. That is awesome. I love where you're going with that. I, I wasn't planning on going here, but uh, that's what this is all about. So Jeff and I have got a book that we've released called The Payday Practice, and it's all about teaching chiropractors uh, how to think about generating monthly recurring revenue. As a business owner, uh, you know, at least with software as a service, I know that's a monthly recurring uh, expense or in your case, monthly recurring revenue. I don't know if in your practice you have sort of memberships or subscriptions that people subscribe to so that you can generate monthly recurring revenue. But what, what's your take on that as far as uh, a business owner, the knowledge, the confidence you're talking about stress and time and 
vulnerability. You know, we, we all, I think, agree working with chiropractors after so many years, ourselves included, that unfortunately, the overwhelming major stress most chiropractors are experiencing is financial stress. And that financial stress is due to their constant stress of needing more new patients. Um, so, you know, what, what's your thought on sort of generating memberships, subscriptions, recurring revenue, so that you can at least sort of have that level of confidence that the staff's going to get paid, my rent's going to be paid, my mortgage is going to be paid, et cetera. Your, your thoughts as a business owner? Oh, yeah, I wouldn't do it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stressful doing it. I mean, we're, we're – um... We, we run care plans in our clinic. So I, I bet you 99 or more percent of all of our revenue is, is monthly recurring revenue. And it's it's just so much better for everybody. But you look at, everybody wants convenience. I mean, you look at the last two years, what's happened in people's lives. I mean, people are ordering everything on an app. Now they get their groceries delivered. They order mobily their coffee. So they don't have to wait in line. They just walk in and pick it up. It, everything's about convenience. And chiropractic now, what we see is they can afford it. It's not a financial thing. Like they have the money to pay for it and they want it. They, they get what we're talking about. They want it now more than ever. And now it's just, well, can I fit this in my life? You know, is this convenient for me? Like, can I, can I see my appointments and my kids' appointments through an app? Can I schedule, can I reschedule really easily? Um, can I get in and out of the office efficiently? Do you just automate my payments? So I don't have to worry about, like pain every time I come in, all of that is convenience. And so I think chiropractors look at it like people don't want to do that for some reason. It's just in their head. Um, it's great. It's better for them. Most people would rather just, can you just automate my payment processes? I get it. It'd make it easy for me to, to make chiropractic care part of my everyday life. And the more chiropractors think like that, uh, the more that it just, people just keep coming because you don't have to reconvince them. You don't have to go get new people and just constantly convince them that they need chiropractic care. And so, yeah, everything's monthly recurring revenue is so much better. We could not agree more. <laughs> we are we are huge <laughs> fans of, of monthly recurring revenue, something that we've been talking a lot about on this show and will continue throughout the year. Eric, I really appreciate you taking the time, sharing some of your experience. It has been impactful. It's been great to learn a little bit more about you personally, as well as SCED. We'd encourage docs out there to check out SCED if they do not have an easy way for people to schedule and reschedule in their practices. On behalf of Jason, our entire team, Eric, thanks for coming on and chatting with us. Absolutely. It was great to meet you guys. I look forward. I'm sure we'll connect many more times in the near future. Uh, if, you, if you're listening to this, our website is sked.life, S-K-E-D dot L-I-F-E. Uh, check us out. But if you ever have a specific practice question about how we integrate SCED into a certain thing in our clinic, reach out to me, Dr. Eric Kowalki on Facebook, or um, shoot me an email, Dr. Eric at sked.life, D-R-E-R-I-K at sked.life. Um, I look forward to connecting to you guys. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Awesome interview with Dr. Eric Kowalki of SCED. Great complimentary tool. Again, when you are teaching and inviting consistently, you want to have it easy for people to be able to connect with and schedule in your office. So if you do not have that available to you currently with your tech stack, Check out SCED. There are some fantastic tools out there. SCED is one of them to help make those conversions easier. Jason, what are some of your thoughts? I know we talked monthly recurring revenue there. I got a feeling that's the direction you're going to go. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, docs just need to get an understanding that there's a difference between an investment and an expense. And investments are things that you pay a little bit of money in order to be able to make more money with that little bit of money you spend. An expense is something you spend money and you don't get much back from it. This is an investment. Having automations, using technology in order to be able to basically leverage yourself, to be able to automate time, talent, connection, make it more convenient for people to schedule with you and so on, uh, is something that saves you time, saves you energy, and gets more people on your books staying on your books. That sounds like a great return to me. So it is a matter of thinking for chiropractors, how do I make sure that I'm not being, I think the term is penny wise and pound foolish. How do I make sure that I'm really using technology and automations, which is what we do also, in a way that's going to end up benefiting you far more than it costs you? This appears to be one of those tools exactly. 
Absolutely. And I love the fact I'm, I'm going to go to recurring revenue for a second before we change it, because I love the fact that he discussed how important that is. Of course, software as a service. Many of us know that because of the tools that we utilize, those subscription services that we utilize for our life and, and for our businesses as well ties into monthly recurring revenue. But he has built his practice around that as well. And just an interesting, another uh, tip, uh, another another person, another example of monthly recurring revenue and building a really solid base in his practice that's enabled him to be able to spend some time on other projects, to grow, to have associates. And it all comes from ensuring that he wasn't going to come up short each month because he has his monthly expenses covered. And I'm sure he's on that path, if not have reached it. So Eric, thanks for coming on, chatting with us. Great interview. Check out Skid if you would like to learn more about uh, about their service and tool offering. And if you'd love to learn more about Smart Chiropractor, you can always visit thesmartchiropractor.com. But on today's show, we're going to head over to our strategic marketing segment. Welcome to Strategic Marketing on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Strategic Marketing is our segment each and every week where we take a few moments and get strategic with marketing in your practice. Topic we're going to cover today is building your marketing with a strategy of teach and invite consistently and why this is so important. The first thing we're going to do is break down teach and invite. We're going to be very specific with what consistently means as well. And then you can think about how you can start applying this in, I'm going to say, practically every aspect of your marketing, your advertising, every aspect of your practice can and should, even your patient communication, can and should be built around some sort of strategic approach. And a teach and invite strategy is probably the best way you can go about it. If you geek out on marketing, you follow somebody like Gary Vaynerchuk, he says, jab, 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 right hook. That is value, 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 ask. In the healthcare world, we simplify it to teach and invite consistently. Let's break that down. Teach, that could be something engaging, entertaining, inspiring, educational. That is how you teach. There's a variety of ways that we can all teach. As you can see, you could be inspirational, you could be educational, you could be engaging. You get to choose on any given day how you want to go about it. But here's the beautiful part. Just like jab, 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 right hook, every time you teach, you've now afforded yourself the opportunity to invite. And I believe us as chiropractors, educators, doctors, we should be teaching all the time. How are people going to learn more about you? How are people going to learn more about themselves if they don't have the resources to do so? Your practice is the best resource that they have, but they can't do it on their own. That you got you to translate what goes on up here to what goes on externally. That is the teach component. The invite is your call to action. Your invite or invitation is the call to action. The call to action could be a variety of different things. Basically, it boils down to what's the next step you would like the person who you just taught to take. That could be call the office. That could be schedule an appointment. That could be comment down below. That could be share this post or email with a friend. There's a variety of different invitations or calls to action that you can utilize. But I think you can see already the power of that, where you're not just selling you are teaching and then inviting. It is a super powerful way to go about your marketing and pretty much every other aspect of your practice, as we said before. Last word's the one that trips up nearly every single chiropractor and other healthcare professional for that matter as well. That's the consistency part. And consistency means every day. <laughs> and, and if you can't get every day, it means as often as you can, but often as you can doesn't mean once a month or once a year. So the more consistent you are, the better. That is also why having tools and resources like the Smart Chiropractor help make it so easy because if you are trying to think about what you're going to teach every single day and staring at that blank sheet of paper, you're going to last about a week, and that's if you're a superstar. It is super hard to do that. So you need to have those strategies. That's why we have an annual calendar, monthly campaigns, weekly topics, daily posts. And if you are connected with our Smart Chiropractor Facebook group, which I would encourage you to do so, we have each day outlined as well. Motivational Monday, Testimonial Tuesday, Wake Up Wednesday, Tactical Thursday, Friday Favorites. A lot of information. If you'd like to see more, we have prompts and scripting available for you 
each and every day in the Smart Chiropractor group. We've published those, I think, at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So you can utilize those scripts and go for it. But when you begin to teach and invite consistently, you build a fantastic base of knowledge. You build a hell of a lot of brand and goodwill in your community. And the byproduct and side effect of that is good stuff. The byproduct and side effect of that is better retention, more reactivations, and more of your ideal new patients coming into your practice. That's why we do what we do. That is why teaching invite is so powerful. Jason, when you when you hear the words teach and invite consistently, uh, I say you hear them. You're the one that gave, gave me those ideas in quite a few years ago. So when you created those ideas and the simplicity is the power in those, uh, what do docs need to know about implementing in their practice and why is this such a critically important aspect of strategic marketing? I'm going to take your second question first. You know, <clears throat> it's always so ironic that you think about our culture and the reality is, I don't think it's hard for us to imagine that most of our country, let alone the world, let's just call it America for right now, wherever you're watching, in America, you would find it hard to believe that almost everybody has the understanding of what our healthcare system is all about wrong. Most, almost everybody, the doctors, the scientists, the researchers, the all the, the politicians, <laughs> almost everybody in our country has the wrong understanding of what our healthcare system should be all about. And that's unfathomable, but undeniable. And I'm going to make the same statement that almost all chiropractors also have the same type of misunderstanding when it comes to understanding what marketing is because they approach it the same way. So let me make the comparison a little deeper. If you ask most people what, what's, a, what's a good healthcare system in America, they would say, oh, more access to more doctors for more drugs and more surgery. If we had access, right? That, that, that's what they claim to be the problem with our system. Not enough people have access to more drugs and more surgery. And so the theory is that if more people had more access, if it was cheaper and more accessible, more people would use it and be healthier. Well, that's just insane if you ask me, if you're talking healthcare. I'm not talking about some people needing emergency care, et cetera. It's not all bad, it's just mislabeled. And that's the same issue we have that we're talking about here today. Most chiropractors think that marketing is advertising, just like most people think healthcare is drugs and surgery. It's just not the case. So teach and invite consistently, as your first question implies, is the translated, simplified version of everything you've ever wanted to know about marketing, real marketing. Now, marketing includes advertising, Advertising is one component of marketing, but advertising is not marketing and marketing is not advertising. They are not equally the same. No different than basketball is a sport and a sport, a sport can be basketball, but basketball is not sports. <laughs> There's something different. So teach and invite consistently is the overarching way of thinking about how to get your message out to people in an interesting way and how to also make sure that you are including that critical aspect of inviting those people who do relate to what you taught, who are curious and interested in learning more or doing something with the information you taught them. That's the critical part of the invitation. And too many chiropractors do one or the other if they're doing it right. Unfortunately, most chiropractors have been influenced by advertisers that advertising equals marketing. They get the quick results, just like the pharmaceutical industry has convinced people that if you just take these drugs, you'll be healthy again. If you run these ads, your practice will be full again. It's just not how it works. And when you understand the philosophy behind it, you completely understand. So teach people something that you enjoy teaching that they would in, be, enjoy learning or benefit from learning and make sure you include that critical invite component. Too many chiropractors are either teaching only 
or inviting only, and very few are doing it consistently. And we've heard it said that consistency is the new intensity, that as we all know, you're better off going to exercise 15 to 30 minutes a day every day than nine hours a day per month. <laughs> okay, do whatever math you need to. It is the consistency over time that leads to results. That's the same thing here. So if you want to really understand the deeper way of building a practice, that's just not getting them in. That's building an audience of people that actually want your services, not just for the temporary relief of symptoms benefit, but because of what it is you've taught them your services are all about. And I'll close simply by saying this. One of the biggest challenges our profession has faced, continues to face, and will continue to face indefinitely is the idea that somehow there's one answer to the question, what is chiropractic? And if we can only find that one person, one place, one organization that could teach everybody what chiropractic is, the theory is that would solve the problem for all of us. And it is an inaccurate theory. We have all been waiting for the holy grail of an organization or a group or a company or a someone to do all the educating for us. We complain about all the organizations, all the schools, all the people who should be doing this for us who aren't doing it, and that's why it's not getting done. BS. If it is to be, it is up to us, up to we. And if you want people to understand what you do in your practice, you cannot outsource that job, that role, that responsibility, that opportunity to anyone else who's never going to do a better job at sharing your message with your audience than you will. The key is to understand how to think about it and then hire the right resources to support you in accomplishing and achieving that goal. The hardest part is consistency because in order to do it right, you've got to have something interesting to teach. You've got to make sure it's backed by research. You've got to present it in a way that is presentable, that people go, wow, that's interesting. That looks good. That's professional, not cheesy and cheap. And wow, look how low my overhead is and look how much money I saved creating this one. <laughs> but a way that actually impresses people and impresses upon people what is in their benefit to know and why they should keep on learning and growing, not about chiropractic, but about you. That's the difference, that's the way we do it. We're here to help all of you and the great news is we can help the entire spectrum of chiropractors because there is no one answer to what chiropractic is that we can all agree on anyway. I'll give you my one answer, probably different, like maybe a little bit different than your one answer and everybody else's one answer. So. Let's understand that we should celebrate diversity in this way, that we can have a spectrum of chiropractors that all speak about what they do in unique ways and are respectful of each other's ways. But most importantly, take responsibility for getting our message out to as many people as we possibly can. The loudest voice is going to win. If you're upset that the fringes are defining what chiropractic is, then use that as motivation to speak louder. If those of us that are in the middle and the mainstream speak up more vocally, more consistently, then guess what will follow? More people will understand what you want them to understand as opposed to what other people are sharing with them louder and more consistently than you are. That is very, very well said, Jason. If you are listening and watching, I would highly encourage you. Rewind about three or four minutes. Listen to that again. Powerful messages there. And again, any time that you get frustrated about what's going on in our profession, that's a great opportunity to move that frustration into what proactive steps can you take to get your message out there. And uh, I think the message of chiropractic continues one by one with each of us doing exactly that. So let's head over to business principles on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. Business principles on today's Smart Chiropractor Show. What is your chiropractic exit strategy? That is what we are going to discuss. I'm going to set the table here before I kick it over to Jason. This is an important topic because so many chiropractors out there 
they do not have an exit strategy. Or maybe the exit strategy is I will sell the practice or maybe I will sell my building. Those aren't terrible exit strategies, but they certainly don't need to be the only exit strategy. You shouldn't be up a creek if you don't own the building you practice in. There are ways that you can have an exit strategy that's meaningful, that also helps support you, and that serves your patients at a higher level. So many of us out there, we have hundreds and thousands and some chiropractors, tens of thousands, 10,000 plus patient records and I'm going to burst a few bubbles. We overvalue it when we're trying to sell it to the young associate. Yet, we've built all that trust, all of that, uh, you know, no trust and like factor. And we like ride off into the sunset, never to be heard from again. And that's like the win. I believe there are ways to ethically and appropriately monetize the audience that you build while building and growing your practice well into your sunset years so that you don't only have to hope that you buy the building your practice is located in to have an exit strategy. And God forbid, you know, chiropractic is a physical, it's a physical profession. I was speaking with a doc earlier this week at Parker Seminars and she's unable to physically practice and she's in her, I'm going to say late 30s, early 40s. It's physical. Many chiropractors out there, it's just the way it is really struggle with injuries as they get later on in their in the profession and later on in the career and some don't exit at the time it's like a major league athlete it's one in a thousand that exits the way they want to it's 999 at the time it kind of catches up with them and it's suboptimal now if you're a major league athlete you have millions of dollars in the bank account that's probably not the worst thing in the world and you can mitigate against it but if you have been a service-based healthcare professional for your entire career and don't have that extra strategy Strategy and it's pushed upon you due to an external event, you can really end up up the creek. And it's a position I believe none of us should be in, but we have to shift our mindset, getting back to our man, mindset segment, but also change some of our business model to and uh, enable that. And Jason, uh, as we discuss this, I'd love to have your thoughts. That was maybe a little bit more than setting the table, but let's get into some of those details. I'll ask you to dive a little bit deeper into how chiropractors can really consider building a sustainable exit strategy that doesn't rely upon only owning the building. You know, it, it's such an important topic. I'm so glad you brought that up for this week. It's funny, I think it was just yesterday I was watching uh, something about how some obscene number, it was like 70 or 90% of NFL players are broke within like seven years after they stop playing. It's just crazy. So that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. They make millions of dollars. They spend millions of dollars. They trust people maybe they shouldn't be trusting and so on and so forth. And then after all that great opportunity, oftentimes end up broke. And that's not limited to the NFL. I think that's a lot of athletes in general and it might, and it's a lot of people in our profession as well. Now, the good news is about chiropractors is most chiropractors have longer career cycles than professional athletes, but the concept is the same. There will be a day that for whatever reason, voluntary or involuntary, that you're not able to show up at your physical practice to provide physical services in exchange for physical dollars. It's just one day that's going to happen. So let's define first what an exit strategy is. Exit, to leave. <laughs> strategy, have a plan. What's your plan when you're no longer able to physically show up to provide physical adjustments? What do you do? That's what we do as chiropractors, done by hand, provide adjustments in a physical building. A lot of chiropractors wouldn't want to argue with me if I suggested it was anything to the contrary. But when we ask this question, the game changes because you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do? What would you do if you got injured, if you had a life event, a family event, if you needed to move for whatever the reasons are, family needs you somewhere else, the family wants to move somewhere else, the family get transferred somewhere else, something goes on that you go, you know what, I got to be, I can't be here, I got to be somewhere else. That's not only not impossible, it's actually very common. So are you thinking about the future? 
Are you thinking about the consequences? Are you thinking about what if? That's what insurance is all about. You don't buy insurance to use insurance. You buy insurance just in case something happens with the hope that you actually never have to use it. What we're talking about is having a strategy in place so that not if, but when you figure out voluntarily or involuntarily, you can't generate revenue bending over a table. What's your plan to be able to generate income otherwise? And that's really the question that we have to ask. And there's not just one answer. Listen, there are some people that were smart back in, I guess they call it the Mercedes 80s. They generated a lot of revenue at the time, just like pro athletes do. And they took a lot of that excess money and invested in things like real estate or other types of investments that therefore generated revenue after they were no longer able to practice. Now, for several decades now, many chiropractors have not had the benefits of the Mercedes 80s, as in the very generous reimbursement of their uh, health insurance policies at the time, and have been eking out a living. Now, I'm not saying they've been broke. I'm just saying the same type of revenue opportunity has not been there for most these days like it was in years past, and likely for those doctors who are probably your mentors or your field doctors or your teachers or your coaches. They just lived in a different time frame. Today's world is completely different. Most people have deductibles so high uh, that they barely meet them unless there was a crisis and or co-payments that are so high that they're about the equivalent of your actual adjustment fee of your over-the-counter adjustment fee, not your insurance adjustment fee. So, You've been making a living. The question is, just like making sure, and this is what Jeff was talking about earlier, if you were a pro athlete or if you were advising a pro athlete, wouldn't your advice be take full advantage of the excess revenue you're making now and be smart about investing in how you're going to generate money when you're no longer able to play, when your contract's over, if you get hurt? Of course, that would be the smart approach. Guess what? It's the smart approach for you, too. So let's just dig a little bit deeper. What are we talking about? We're talking about figuring out ways to generate monthly recurring revenue to cover your monthly recurring expenses in ways that do not require you to bend over a table and be there physically. Now, some of you may mean, oh, OK, that means that I'll open up more practices for other people to do the work. That's an option but you're still managing people and you still got to manage the business. There's other ways in today's world. Jeff and I are releasing a brand new book called The Payday Practice that solves this exact issue for those that are thinking about it. We come up with three different ways that you can be generating monthly recurring revenue. And only one of those ways requires you to be physical. If you wanted to take our strategies and hire somebody else to do the physical work, you could do that. But there are ways you can take your knowledge, your information, your expertise, and generate monthly recurring revenue to cover your monthly recurring expenses by sharing what you know. That is a really important and valuable way to do it. Why? It doesn't require you or anyone else to be in a physical practice. We're not saying you shouldn't practice. We're saying in the event you can't practice, you should have some money coming in to support yourself and your family. And the third way to do it is to recommend your favorite products, the things that people are probably already buying now. They probably have come to you and asked you your recommendation for what type of daily supplement should I take? What kind of mattress should I sleep on? What kind of you get questions every day, all day. What should I take for? What should I do for? What's your favorite fill in the blank? And if you're not taking that opportunity seriously, then you might just be holding back from your number one best opportunity to finance your future or your best exit strategy possible. Just like pro athletes who should be making hay while the sun is shining, you should be generating monthly recurring revenue while you have the audience of people you have, as in your patient base. And if you're following what we're teaching you, we'll call it your health tribe, which is the number of people you're able to influence in your practice, 
on your email list, on social media, and who you can teach and invite consistently. And the new way to think about your exit strategy is to build monthly recurring revenue that you can count on whether you're physically at your practice or not. And now is the time to do it, just like a pro athlete has a window of time in order to be able to take advantage of that revenue. If you're in active practice now, now is the time for you to be able to create your knowledge membership base or your subscriptions to your favorite products so you can generate enough monthly recurring revenue that builds over time so that by the time you need to exit, you've had enough time to build momentum to generate enough monthly recurring revenue so you never have to worry about finances again. That's our goal for you. Whether you're retiring and needing to exit or whether you're still in practice, I can promise you one thing, that when you eliminate the financial stress that is behind motivating to, for you to do what you do, you will be a better doctor. You will be a better person. You will be a better fill in the blank, husband, wife, son, daughter, father, mother, whatever you want to be. When finances don't have to stress you out, you will be a better one of those. So do it now. Momentum matters. Time is on your side. Just decide whether you want to finance your future starting now. All of us give our children advice now that we're older. We say, invest a little bit while you're young because of the benefit of compound interest over time. We're teaching the same exact thing. We refer to Einstein's compound interest, but then change it to be the compounding effect of the people who are interested in learning from you over time is what's going to finance your future. It is your number one exit strategy you can be thinking about right now. If you want to learn more, make sure you stay tuned for the book, The Payday Practice. Make sure you take up our invitation to join us for our webinar and make sure you join us for our 30 day accelerator payday practice training. We will go deep, not into just why you should do it and not and, and get into how you should do it, but also work with you to figure out how you should do it, not how you can do it but how you should specifically do it. There's a lot of different choices. It's very individual depending on where you wanna exit, what you wanna do, how you wanna do it. Everyone's got a different story. We're here to help you share and tell your story that's right for you. Jeff, exit strategy is the name of the game. Most chiropractors don't wanna think there will be a day that they can't do it. We don't wanna think about it either, but it's a responsible thing to do because it's inevitable. There will be that day that you're going to face. And the sooner you face it and the smarter you face it, the easier it's going to be. You said it. And you know, there's no turning back the clock. Yeah, gravity and time, these are things that uh, they are going to con continue, continue on. So considering exactly as you laid out, considering the options for monthly recurring revenue, considering the options of what you can build today, to really enable you to have the future you want tomorrow is a fantastic way to think and consider your practice. And the benefit is it can also help uh, meet your monthly minimum expenses in the meantime. So the sooner you get started, momentum matters. You said it. For everybody listening and watching, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. I feel like over the last few weeks, we have had some fantastic shows. We have some great ones coming up, but I say that because if you are new to producing content and you are looking at your first few videos saying, gosh, I don't know, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't think I sounded and looked like that. Right? that. That is a normal thing. It is a skill. It is less about talent, more about consistency and skill. Skills are learned over time. Our shows, I feel like, continue to get better as we do them, and we are six months in, so if you are new, whether you're Smart Chiropractor member utilizing our scripts, or whether you're going on your own right now, not yet a member, don't be too hard on yourself. Get out there, teach and invite, have some fun with it. Don't worry about what you look or what you sound like today. 
Keep it up, push through. You will build that skill over time. We're gonna keep on teaching as well. So please, again, if you are checking this out on your mobile phone right now or on a social network, enable notifications so you don't miss a segment. If you're checking this out on YouTube, we would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you do not miss anything there as well. And keep an eye out. The Payday Practice is launching very soon. I have a sneaking suspicion we're gonna have a special episode next week talking it at depth and at length about the payday practice, but stay tuned. Keep your eyes on the email. Keep your eyes on this channel. Contribute. The more that you contribute, the more you let us know what you like, what you'd love for us to dive into, the more that we can fine tune the show to deliver the most value to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. On behalf of Jason and our entire Smart Chiropractor team spread out across the country and beyond, we thank you so much for being a chiropractor. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Have a great one. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching this video on the Smart Chiropractor. To not miss a single thing that's clinically oriented, marketing oriented, or more, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel today.